Hello everyone, this is John with John Monarchic Fine Art welcoming you to another video. Yes, you weren't mistaken. You saw some color on this panel before I started. That's because I started another video and made a mistake and I wiped it off and then I just, instead of wasting the panel, I just kind of uh, started all over again. So you, did, you weren't hallucinating. You weren't, your eyes weren't playing tricks on you. I, like everybody else, messes up at times. Me, I mess up on quite a, quite a lot, actually. So, anyways, this is another water mixable um, painting, oil painting. And this is my Daniel Smith water mixable oils. And I think, oh, what do we got here? I think this is, this is my second video with these paints, but my fourth painting overall with them. And... I really like them. Um, I've tried three other brands. This is the fourth brand of Water Mixable. And even though my studio with conventional oils is pretty green because I use non-toxic solvents um, and mediums and stuff, you know, I don't use anything with petroleum base, no fumes, no carcinogens, nothing like that. Um, it's still messy. You know, it still gets all over your hands. It's still, you know, a little tough to clean. It's just... I've been wanting to do water mixable, and I stayed away from it only because every one I tried, I just didn't like. There was something about it. So far, this is, like I said, the fourth painting, and the Daniel Smiths are everything that I wanted. I mean, they're not perfect like, you know, nothing is, but they really do a good job. They clean easy. Soap and water at the end, and my brushes are, like, new. Um, it's got a really high pigment load, so it's got great coverage, as you can see. And it's just, it's something that I really enjoy. So I believe, I mean, I still have quite a few conventional oils left and I'm obviously not gonna, you know, throw them out or anything else. So I'm gonna use them up. But um, as I run out of paint, I'm gonna replace it with the water mixables only. And it's gonna be the Daniel Smith. I'm not even gonna try any more brands right now. I know some people were talking about Cobra is great and I have no doubt. But I finally found something that I really liked, and I'm going to stick with it for now. And then the other uh, conventional paints I'm going to use for some other studio work and a lot of plein air work, because even though the weather doesn't show it, um, it is coming up to plein air season, and um, I'm going to be doing a lot of painting outside, and I'm going to be doing a lot of videos with the painting outside. But I will have a lot more YouTube videos with just the water mixable I will sprinkle in a conventional oils here and there, you know, as I use them and do in the plain air. But the majority of what you're going to be seeing on my channel from now on will be the water mixable and in particular the Daniel Smith. Now, the other thing that you're going to be seeing a lot more of that I also decided I'm going to change to is what I'm painting on right now, which is a gesso board. It's an eighth inch um, thick gesso board and it's made by Ampersand. It's an American company made here in the U.S., as is the Daniel Smith uh, oil paint. And this is probably the fifth or sixth painting that I've done on these panels, and I absolutely love them. They're archival. They're sturdy. They're... I really believe the paint just shows up and stands on the surface real nice, and the colors are a little bolder. They're a little more lush and rich. I just love the way my work... Um, ends up looking on these panels. And what's nice is, and this is surprising me, I saw them by mistake. Well, not by mistake, but I didn't realize I'd find them there. This panel is a 9 by 12 and I only paid, I think it was $7.99 at Hobby Lobby. I didn't realize Hobby Lobby would have something, you know, this archival and this nice. Because, you know, they're mostly like a craft store. They don't have a lot of fine art stuff. But they have, you know, like, you know, some of the brushes that they have for Master's Touch oil brushes I like. And um, some of their um, cheaper canvas that I've used for, like, little studies and stuff is pretty good. But this ampersand uh, was a nice find over there because I don't have to order it online. And believe it or not, the price at Hobby Lobby for this 9x12 and the 11x14s they have are uh, actually less expensive than in regular uh, art stores. So that was a pleasant surprise. It's real convenient to, um, to get these panels then. So I'm going to be using the Daniel Smith Water Mixables. And I'm going to be using these panels. And then the only thing that I'm going to change is the amount of tube colors that I use. And the reason I want to do that is because I've been experimenting on and off for the last year 
about using less and less tube colors and doing more mixing. And my work has been coming out much, much better um, to my liking. And a big part of that is you just have that, I guess you just call it color harmony because you're not using so many different tubes of paint. Like right now, I am at five tubes of paint, color paint, plus white. So I have Hansa Yellow Light, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, uh, French Ultramarine, Raw Umber, and Sap Green, and then obviously Titanium White. And those are the only colors. What I'm probably going to do is take out either the Sap Green or the Raw Umber as I get better at mixing paint. I haven't decided how that's going to work. Or I might just stick with a total of five colors and um, leave it at that. You know, I'm not going to be putting seven, eight, nine, ten colors on my palette at a time. I'm not going to have that many colors, period. So I'm either going to um, keep it where it's at or subtract maybe one, possibly two colors. I mean, obviously, the white and the primaries are mandatory. Technically, with the white and the primaries, you can mix any color in the color wheel. However, there are some real bright, lush colors of something that you can't really mix. You know, like purples makes it tough. Uh, a violet... If you're doing like a flower or something, it's you can mix it and have it look really nice, but you can't get some of those really intense colors like you see on flowers at different places. So I'm just going to experiment with that like I did with the water mixable oils. This has been a probably a year and a half process to find the right uh, water mixable oil that I liked. And then I finally came up with it. And then uh, the same thing with the painting surface, you know, the uh, ampersand. I've tried a lot of other um, supports, and I love the linen. Stretched linen is a great support. But um, these panels, like I said, everything I want my art to look like works with these paints and these panels. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, this little hack that I came up with that I'm guessing I'm not the first one, but it's just I just thought of it. The eighth-inch panels, obviously, are only an eighth of an inch. So when you're painting the bottom and you've got no, and you have no edges really to hold, okay, as you're painting the bottom, it gets almost impossible on any kind of an easel. You almost have to have it on a table so you can paint down over. And that's not a good, you know, perspective for the artist to look at to paint. You know, it's better to have it at the angle on the easel like I have it now and then um, paint from there. So what I did was I, find some, I found some two-sided double tape. And I just put a little bit at the top, and then I put this hardboard, this old piece that I had from I don't even know where. And then obviously, if you, as you can see, it raised it up to where I can hold on to the hardboard and not the actual painting surface. And then it's easier to control. It's easier to put the brush all the way to the bottom, wherever you need it to be. Then I wait till the paint gets a little dry, starts to tack up a little bit. And then I just take like a palette knife underneath and gently lift up and take off the tape and then just put it in my drying rack until it's uh, touch dry and then I can put retouch varnish on it and uh, you know take it to shows or whatever the case may be. So it's pretty much like you know necessity is the mother of invention. I love these panels but the eighth of an inch was driving me crazy getting the bottom and you know my thumbprint on the paint on the sky and I was thinking okay starting at the bottom and then going to the top and it was just a mess. And then I saw this panel that was, I don't know, just on the floor in the corner of my studio. And I thought, hey, wait a minute. This might work. Okay. I haven't really talked much about this particular painting. A very simplistic painting. Mountains in the background. Okay. You don't want a lot of detail. However, you do need to have a little bit. So as you can see, I've got the highlights and the shadows on, but I don't have either of them real intense. Okay. My focal point is the waterfall there on the left. So I made the mountains with a little bit less uh, pronounced um, highlight and shadow. It's enough to where you can see it so they have form, but it's not enough to really bring it forward. And then I put some trees and grass in the foreground right in front of it, like the foothills of a much darker value, and that'll push those mountains even further back. And then I've got the waterfall as a nice bright white coming down, and that'll help, you know, bring that forward. And then it's just kind of a real nice, 
one of the ways you can do perspective, this is like uh, atmospheric perspective, where you overlap or, in this case, you do have the overlap with the trees and like the little foothills in front of it, but you also have the contrast of detail. You have a lot more detail here in the front and mid-ground than you do on the mountains in the background. And then you also have fainter colors, not as intense as the colors in the mid-ground and the foreground. So if you want color, uh, an, um, an element to go in the background, one of the things you can do is have less detail on it, and the other thing you can do is subdued color. And those will definitely move whatever element you have in your landscape further back. And then the further back you want it to go would be just less and less detail and less and less um, color intensity to where you can just make it real bland and real faint. And at that point in time, you know, it's barely visible, but you know it's there if you really look. And then the other thing here, I got these rocks. And rocks are a lot of fun. Okay, I make them the same way I do the mountains. Okay, as you can see, I'm putting in the blue. It's barely visible here because it's mixing with the uh, brown and alizarin crimson mixture that I have for the rocks. I'm darkening it up there. You can see a little bit. But what's fun about the rocks is, you know, it's like a one-stroke type of deal with your, I'm using a filber brush. And I really enjoy that, you know, just putting it down. It's a lot of fun. It's spontaneous. It just, it makes it, you know, a blast to do. So I put rocks in a lot of things. They're just a nice landscape element that, you know, kind of solidifies. It helps as like a filler for ground area that, you know, you're not sure of what you want to do. And then the uh, little flowers that I did, those I just took a brush, as you saw, and then pulled straight up to make the reeds and the stems, let's say. And then I just used the corner with the paint of the same brush and I just lightly tapped them on. And then there you got a nice bunch of realistic looking flowers. So this painting is pretty much done. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Like I said, if you're into water mixable oil paints or you're thinking about it, um, keep hit the subscribe button and keep tuning in. I've got, this is the fourth one I have on it, I think. And uh, like I said, from now on, the overwhelming majority of my videos will be the uh, water mixable. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I hope everybody has a great day and I'll see you next time.